Poems Every Child Should Know Edited by Mary E. Burt Section 4 Read for LibriVox.org by Kara Schallenberg This section contains the following poems. How the Leaves Came Down Wee Willy Winky and The Owl and the Pussycat Part 1 Continued how the Leaves Came Down How the Leaves Came Down by Susan Coolidge, born 1845, appeals to children because it helps to reconcile them to going to bed. I go to bed by day is one of the crosses of childhood. I'll tell you how the leaves came down, the great tree to his children said. You're getting sleepy, yellow and brown. Yes, very sleepy, little red. It is quite time to go to bed. Ah, begged each silly pouting leaf, let us a little longer stay. Dear father tree, behold our grief, tis such a very pleasant day, we do not want to go away. So for just one more merry day, to the great tree the leaflets clung, frolicked and danced and had their way upon the autumn breezes swung, whispering all their sports among. Perhaps the great tree will forget and let us stay until the spring, if we all beg and coax and fret. But the great tree did no such thing. He smiled to hear their whispering. "'Come, children, all to bed,' he cried, and ere the leaves could urge their prayer, he shook his head, and far and wide, fluttering and rustling everywhere, down sped the leaflets through the air. I saw them, on the ground they lay, golden and red, a huddled swarm, waiting till one from far away, white bedclothes heaped upon her arm, should come to wrap them safe and warm. The great bare tree looked down and smiled. Good night, dear little leaves, he said. And from below each sleepy child replied, Good night, and murmured, It is so nice to go to bed. Susan Coolidge Wee Willie Wee Willie Winky by William Miller, 1810-1872, is included in this volume out of respect to an eight-year-old child who chose it from among hundreds. We had one poetry hour every week, and he studied and recited it with unabated interest to the end of the year. Wee Willie Winky rins through the town, upstairs and downstairs in his nicht gown, tirlin at the window, cryin at the lock. Are the wains in their bed? For it's now ten o'clock. Hey, Willy Winky, are ye comin' then? The cat's singin' gay thrums to the sleepin' hen. The dog's speldered on the floor and disna gie a cheep. But here's a wowcriff laddie that winna fa asleep. Onything but sleep, ye rogue, glowerin' like the moon, rattlin' in an airn jug wi' an airn spoon, rumblin' tumblin' round about, crowin' like a cock, skirlin' like a canna what. Walkin' and sleepin' folk. Hey, Willy Winky, the wain's in a creel, Womblin' off a body's knee like a very eel, Ruggin' at the cat's lug and ravelin' a her thrums. Hey, Willy Winky, see, there he comes. Weary is the mither that has a story ween, A wee strumpy stousy that canna rin his lane, That has a battle eye with sleep before he'll close an a, But a kiss fray off his rosy lips, Gee strengthen you to me. William Miller The Owl and the Pussycat The Owl and the Pussycat by Edward Lear, 1812-1888, is placed here because I once found that a timid child was much strengthened and developed by learning it. It is a song that appeals to the imagination of children, and they like to sing it. The owl and the pussy-cat went to sea in a beautiful pea-green boat. They took some honey and plenty of money wrapped up in a five-pound note. The owl looked up to the moon above and sang to a small guitar, O oh, lovely pussy, O oh, pussy my love, what a beautiful pussy you are, you are, what a beautiful pussy you are. Pussy said to the owl, You elegant fowl, how wonderfully sweet you sing! Oh, let us be married, too long we have tarried, but what shall we do for a ring? They sailed away for a year and a day, 
to the land where the bong tree grows. And there, in a wood, a piggy wig stood with a ring in the end of his nose, his nose, with a ring in the end of his nose. Dear pig, are you willing to sell for one shilling your ring? said the piggy, I will. So they took it away and were married next day by the turkey who lives on the hill. They dined on mince and slices of quince, which they ate with a runcible spoon, and hand in hand on the edge of the sand they danced by the light of the moon, the moon, they danced by the light of the moon. Edward Lear. End of section four. Read by Kara Schallenberg. www.kray.org. On October eighth, two thousand six, in Oceanside, California.